this Thursday, January 13th, and the time for your Bobby List to be morning news update. Senior Economic Advisor to the Government, Dr. Kevin Greenwich, has dismissed claims by the Democratic Liberal Party that Barbadians will face austerity measures if the Barbados Liberal Party is returned to office in the January 19th general election. Addressing a political meeting recently, former Tourism Minister Richard Seeley claimed that draconian measures were planned by the BLP post-election. But Dr. Greenwich told Barbados today he knew of no such thing as Barbados was on track to continued growth. I know of no such thing. I can't mean, you remember our economy was on track to grow up, right? on track to grow up. We face the fiscal, we face the debt, we pay back the wage, we face the reserves. The only thing we made that we're supposed to do is continue the structural reforms that came up to the to review the online survey that we did with the public about they say what they want in terms of SOEs and the service delivery, optional, etc. That kind of work had to continue to improve efficiency in delivery of services. We started to transfer more, we tried to different ways. So that has to continue. Um, I don't know, there's not a clarity about that. I don't know, I don't, I, people just steal this up. There's no hostility in my drama, we all, I mean, we, we did all the hard, all the hard work and had the listening with them between 2018 and pre-COVID. I think the most thing about focusing on getting growth, you're going to go grow. Seely, who's contesting the St. Michael South Central seat, also raised concerns about the island's future relations with the IMF. But Greenwich said while the homegrown IMF financed Barbados economic recovery and the transmission program must continue, questions as to whether the government wants support under the extended fund facility to go on beyond the March 2022 date is a political decision. I know we'll continue with the BERT program. The BERT program is our grown program that was supported by this IMF support. That mm -hmm. program has to continue because a lot of structural reforms and things that were being done and improving efficiencies and things like that that has to be continued. That was put on hold because of COVID. So they need to continue that. They may have to treat it for the circumstance, but it has to continue. Chief Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth George says Barbados is experiencing another wave of the COVID-19 pandemic with the highly transmissible Omicron variant gradually taking over. And he's appealing to residents to exercise extra care and to follow all health protocols, particularly during this general election season. The cases have been increasing over the last two weeks. Ministry of Health remains very concerned. There is, based on information we have, the patterns of disease spread and the level of infectivity. We are obviously in uh, a micron type mode. I have told the public why I put confirmed information that we did have a micron in Barbados. I couldn't confirm the numbers, but based on the level of spread and the rapidly increasing numbers, both with respect to the positivity rate, the cumulative cases per 100,000, both the 70 and 14 day average, and the R effective number, all trending upwards at this point. Bobby, this is in its third wave, which is well established. The chief medical officer said that while the number of people who are infected by the Omicron variant at this time may experience less severe illness, Barbadians must not let their guard down. The clinical behavior of patients is one in which there are high infection rates. We are not seeing as many uh, sick individuals. We are not seeing as many deaths. But uh, we are still worried that those numbers can go up simply because of the numbers of persons potentially infected. On to news from the campaign trail. Incumbent Barbados Labour Party candidate for St. Lucie, Peter Phillips, believes important strides were made in the area of housing and roadworks in the constituency despite the economic challenges and the emergence of the COVID-19 pandemic. He, however, admitted that the persistence of brown water flowing through the taps due to aging means still lingers, but promised to tackle the issue and others once re-elected. I, I, I see as a, I see as a litmus test. I certainly believe that I have done, based on the record 
um, that we, and what has happened in St. Lucie, that St. Lucie will again return to the Barbados Labour Party. Now, after two and a half years, you have had you have had a number of projects. You have people working. When you look in St. Lucie, and I hear this as I move around from time to time, as I was moving around, even before election was called, persons were happy that they were seeing things happening. And they refer to the things that I mentioned to you earlier, earlier the, the cleaning, the cleanup program, the, 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 in, the improvement in the bus service. They talk about the, the housing and people felt at last represented, you know, and that things were happening for them. I do not fool people and into believing that everything can happen for you all at the same time and in a short period. But people are seeing the effort and people have said, we believe that it had there not been a COVID situation, we would have been much further and that is true. However, DLP candidate and party president of Rila de Pizzo, who is challenging Phillips for the seat, believes his three and a half years in office yielded little to no representation for constituents. She expressed dissatisfaction with the current MP's response to the water woes, the road infrastructure, and even the public transportation system. The roads are in deplorable condition and the transport system is ridiculous. There is one bus that travels the whole of St. Lucie at certain times of the day. I call it the scenic bus ride, but for those who have to do it on a daily basis, it, it really is a waste of time. It, is, it, it also does not serve some people in St. Lucie. For instance, those in Allendale have to walk either from Malna Corta or from the parish church corner, and those in Trent and Hannes, they have to walk in from the church corner as well. These are all ministries that the MP for St. Lucie was a junior minister in. All of them. All of them. And nothing has happened for the people of St. Lucie. There's regional and international news after this short break. Hi, my name is Michelle Hines and I own a company called HM Novelties. I have three children two of which are under the age to get the vaccine and that makes them vulnerable. And the eldest, she is vaccinated and that's a good thing because all she wants to do is hang with her friends. I take care of my 80 year old mum, and she has many comorbidities. And I love my mum, and I would not want for anything to happen to her. I am one of the ones that suffered absolutely no symptoms for either the first or the second jab. When you have the vaccine, you have a weapon to fight against this virus, to fight against this beast. 95% of my friends and family are vaccinated and that literally makes me feel secure. Let's roll up our sleeves and get back to living. Good news from other region, Guyana's Health Minister Dr. Frank Anthony is urging people to help stop the spread of the COVID-19 virus. It comes as the country recorded over 1,000 new COVID-19 cases in a 24-hour period. More from News Source, Guyana. Guyana has recorded an additional 1,019 new COVID-19 cases over the past 24 hours, pushing the number of active cases in the country to 7,613. Minister of Health Dr. Frank Anthony is warning persons who are experiencing flu-like symptoms that they should isolate themselves or get tested since those flu-like symptoms could actually be COVID-19 symptoms. What we have seen is that the, with the current surge uh, with the Omicron variant uh, that the, the disease resembles um, more like a flu. Uh, the symptoms are similar because most people now who are infected with um, the Omicron variant, they will present with stuffy nose or runny nose, sore throat, um, some headache and things like that. So these are similar signs uh, to persons who 
would get flu. While Guyana is still to officially confirm the presence of the fast-spreading Omicron variant in the country, health officials suspect that it is that presence of the variant that is responsible for the sudden increase in new cases. More than 75% of the active cases are in Region 4, with more than 4,800 cases. There are over 900 active cases in Region 3 and 561 active cases in Region 6. Of the more than 7,000 active cases, 93 persons are in the hospital, with 64 of them at the Ocean View facility, with 13 persons in the intensive care unit. And so finally, the IMF's managing director, Kristalina Georgieva, is urging economies to assess how strong their defenses are against COVID-19 and how much policy space they have to boost businesses and to support households, especially the vulnerable ones. It comes as she expressed concern over how this new wave of COVID-19 infections will affect divergence, inflation and debt. I would have liked very much uh, to have a uh, more optimistic uh, outlook at the beginning of the year, but reality is uh, we are looking into a uh, somewhat weaker momentum of the recovery and higher uncertainties, more risks in 2022. Uh, to give you the uh, the perspective from the fund. Already towards the end of the previous year, we were concerned that the recovery was weakening. Why? Because the two big engines of the world economy, the US and China, both were slowing down vis-a-vis -vis projections uh, from the summer. And now we also have uh, Omicron. For us at the fund, it is not a surprise that there is a new wave. That's news. But for the very latest, visit us at www.barbidestoday.bb. You can also subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook, and sign up for our breaking news alerts via WhatsApp. We're also on Izumi Media in bus terminals, as well as screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. And you can also hear us on Mix 96.9 FM and Capital Media HD 99.3 FM.